All right, so something I get asked pretty routinely about is how I converted my front differential to lock with a cable mechanically. Um, I've eliminated the electric motor um, actually because mine broke. And at the time I couldn't find any that were like used were 300 bucks, new were 650 bucks. So I decided to come up with this. So the housing has been broken away from what is this lever. Um, the lever you can see with the bolt at, in the end and the, and the pin um, was a factory, um, like a start stop switch. It hit the endpoints to tell the motor to turn off. And what I've done is taken that, flattened it out here, drilled the hole in the end of it, and then rigged up uh, with this um, cable clamp and then a universal heavy equipment throttle cable. I got it at Napa for 40 bucks. Um, but literally inside the cab will push pull and that moves the lever here, which then engages and disengages the front locker. So um, in the up position, it's, it's pulled out, which um, is open. And then when you push uh, my um, cable in from the inside of the truck, that pushes this down, which then locks or engages the front locker and creates it to, to lock. So um, just a second, we'll go inside the cab here. So, um, let's see if I can scan out here, but just, so my eBay fakie steering wheel, um, radio and stuff, but right here, you can see um, where the cigarette lighter outlet should be. I have this mechanical throttle cable. So you push in on the middle and push it in. That locks the front differential. That's pushing down on that lever that we just looked at at the front diff. So that's engaging the gear, which locks the differential. Wanna unlock it, just push in on that button, pull it out, front differential is back to unlock. So um, I don't know about you guys, I prefer the mechanical over the electronic. Something I can fix easy on the trail if necessary. Um, I mean, if, if you know, worse push comes to shove, you know, you could always just get down there and mechanically grab that lever at this point and lock or unlock that differential as needed. So um, one, of the, one of the little things that I've done, I guess, that I've had a lot of people ask me about on the forums and stuff when they're like, oh, no, what do I do? You know, I got this $650 actuator motor or, or you know, the actuator isn't working. And um, this was my, like, you know, $45 solution, so. In the meantime, working on Stomper. Um, we're on front axle housing number four since I've had the truck running and driving. Um, I think you guys seen the demise of the last one at Silver Lake Sand Dunes. And then I um, went did the Holly Oaks run and we went down there and actually um, snapped the rear pinion off at uh, at the the housing. So um, back to the 529 welded differential on the rear. In the meantime, I've got new 529 gears and put in my e-locker for the front differential. I've just been working underneath it last couple of nights. We've got that front differential all reinstalled in the housing. Um, which requires drilling and tapping some holes, um, cutting a little uh, notch out for the uh, where the, the actual sliding gear is for the locking portion. Um, well, we've got the trunk on stands this time. Uh, I spent a little bit of time, made some, myself some, some knuckleball gussets, um, top and bottom. The top is some 3 8 steel that I've cut to fit into the groove. The bottom is some quarter inch thick angle iron, which I've cut um, and fit on the bottom. So don't, thankfully I've still got a, a spare housing here that's straight that I was uh, using for mock-up. Um, I've also worked on mocking up uh, a ring gear guard.
and uh, let's see here, a, a bottom guard as well. So um, we're gonna have this uh, have this bottom guard on here, which I cut to fit around that drain plug opening. Um, this one's just got some dirt pl plugged in it, but um, still like the easy use of the factory drain plug hole. It's nice, large, quick draining. You know, after you've been in the water or playing around like that, you definitely definitely want to check those fluids, make sure that we're not getting water in there, tearing up bearings and stuff. So um, I like the ease of easy use of the factory drain plugs. Um, but this will guard the bottom. Again, this is some, um, you know, some thick stuff. I think this is 516 that I use here. So we're going to do that. And then uh, we're going to tie that in here. It's kind of a, kind of a jock strap looking thing um, to guard the ring gear. Um, which of course we're going to weld all that on the housing that's in the truck, but right now just using this housing for mock-up. Um, and then I'm hoping to, you can see I got some angle iron stuff on the floor. I'm hoping to take and maybe make some sort of a lateral brace as well as the traditional top brace. Um, just to try and give, uh, you know, the axle that's in the truck this time, you know, all the fighting chance it can get. So uh, I guess I tend to be somewhat of a durability tester so but yeah 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 fun fun keep an eye on the channel and uh watch what's going down it's kind of a crunch time for me i'm getting ready for uh another big outing so um i don't know if i did a video on it or not but last winter uh we did a little bit of uh an off-road winter camping four-wheeling event so uh we're gonna take the, the rooftop tent put it on the back of stopper we're gonna haul it up to the middle of the uh northern michigan's upper peninsula and uh kind of go two tracking and trailing from there for kind of a uh two and a half day uh adventure camping out of the back of the truck um for a couple of nights um and this is going to happen january 8th 9th and 10th so uh it's, i'm sure it's going to be cold uh, we may or may not run into massive amounts of snow it's the up so um you know sometimes they don't get much and uh, other times you know they get two feet or three feet in a day so uh, time will tell in the meantime it's crunch time I'm trying to get this thing uh put back together so we can go out and enjoy it